Hello happy viewers, I'm Lorenzo and you're watching episode 21 of KSP to Mars. Today is a happy day because it's the first episode with a properly functioning Param Aerospace plugin. This means our rocket can get off the path right quick. Have a look at that now, it's accelerating faster than it did before. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, please go ahead and watch them, they are fun, but the aerodynamics were shit. Today the mission plan is simple, we're taking Bill Kerman and we're launching him up as high as he dares. Not really, because then he would probably fly out the system or decide to go back home now already. I forget, is Bill the scared one or the courageous one? Anyway, it's not Jebediah, he is dead. But resuming, the mission plan today is to go to the edge of Kerman influenced space, well Earth influenced space, sample solar space in other words, have Bill take an EVA report, do a crew report, and he is carrying an experiment, uh, the materials bay for uh, well for extra science points. The point is, uh, we're going to get into orbit, and then basically just boost to make that as uh, elliptic as possible, to maintain a low periapsis so that we can dip right outside Earth's sphere of influence. I'm keep getting confused between Earth and Kerbin because of course in the game it's called Kerbin but all the stats match up with Earth so well it's Earth or Kerbin, Kerth, Ker doesn't matter really so that we can um, get science and get more parts you will notice that I am still using the rocket from previous episodes I have not taken the time yet to develop a bigger one but Instead, I'm taking this, uh, this opportunity to see how it flies in the Ferrum Aerospace module. And because it is a change from the last time around, I'm going to show you uh, it as well, albeit in a slightly accelerated fashion, because it does take about 15 minutes to get to orbit in this mod, which is long. So here goes a 10 times time acceleration. And there we are, coming on up on our, well, we're not coming up on anything, so that little sentence didn't make any sense. We are, uh, we have established a trajectory that will take us out of the solar system, well, out of the Earth system, not uh, quite out of the solar system yet, that would be a little bit getting ahead of things. But anyway, Bill Kerman here is fast rising to be the first Kerbal outside of Earth's sphere of influence in solar space and he is very ready to do science there. He's like the Felix Baumgartner, the guy that jumped from the stratosphere or whatever that height was. He is definitely higher and is getting ready to radio his science back. In other news, I have installed a fresh Windows install. Uh, it was a bit of a pain in the ass because my old hard disk had broken and the Windows installer insisted on installing onto the broken hard disk because I have an upgrade thingy that needs the previous one but I didn't have the disk for the previous Windows so I had to do some tomfoolery, jiggery pokery to finally get that to work but in the end I did and everything is nice and smooth now running on two drives instead of the three. Um, which only made things things better because a 10 year old hard disk drive only slows your system down as it turns out so that's great here we are Bill doing the science and radioing that back home well he's not going to radio the materials bay back home because that of course has a lot more points in it uh, when returned to the space center now this rocket has a heat shield on the pod but any re-entry that's imaginable from this height will s almost certainly incinerate the materials base. So what we're going to do is we're going to send Bill out of the capsule to retrieve the um, retrieve the experiment from the materials bay and store the results in the capsule. This is something you can do in the last update and I had no idea you could until one of my viewers pointed that out. So I forgot who that was, terribly sorry about that, but thank you anyway, it's a good little trick. As soon as Bill gets that uh, information out of the science canister, 
he is going to climb back into the ship let's see him do that now and fire his rocket for a return home because if he does not he will spend eternity co-orbiting the orbiting the sun in a I don't know what I want to say he will spend eternity co-orbiting the sun with earth he will be in the same orbit just a little bit ahead of it probably not see the earth again in many thousands of years or at least hundreds of years or at least several days but that would be enough to get him to be terribly bored anyway this is easy we're just going to point retrograde burn and wait so I'll show you how that turned out now and after a plummet of several days Bill is now re-entering Earth's atmosphere we're under 80 uh, 80,000 meters, 80 kilometers, and the heat is starting to, well, become noticeable for poor old Bill. We are firing the engine, burning up the remains of that fuel to, well, scrub off all the speed we can get. I did this in the Mission A Day series in the stock ASP solar system a lot, where it was quite easy to do with some leftover fuel to take one or two kilometers per second off, which in almost all circumstances would be a, a decent fraction if not like outright half of the re-entry speed. Here in the real solar system it doesn't help that much. We are entering at just a hair under 11 kilometers per second and while well, we can burn off maybe 1, 1.2 kilometers per second of that speed. Of course it's a 10% um, decrease of the amount of speed that needs to go into the atmosphere but it's not a game changer not by any means uh, we have had our periapsis at around about 67 kilometers uh, where we are now and now we're going to pass back up into space so this again will be a multi-round uh, several passes re-entry this is good because then Bill in all probability gets to survive the drawbacks of this is of course that it will take a horrendously long time to watch but fortunately for that we have the miracles of video editing so I will see you on the final pass and there we are our periapsis is now about 55 kilometers and my predictions are or were because I'm, this is a post recording again that that will be the altitude at which Bill is definitely not going back up into space anymore and if we, if we look at the trajectory we see that's reasonable. The excess parts are now exploding off the vessel that's some batteries going and I'm expecting the engine to go any second now and then finally the heat shield will become exposed. If all goes well Bill will then be gently wafted to the surface. We're decelerating at just about 1G at 55 kilometers, 57 actually and everything is looking so far so good. Some erroneous explosions, but Bill has read the mission briefing. Controlled destruction of the craft upon re-entry is very much part of the plan. His scientific data is safe and sound within the capsule, and just now the engine is reaching critical overheat. We're at 4 Gs now, and the tank should go any second. The tank goes, and we immediately... Oh no, first the experiment bay goes and now boom the G skyrocket to 15 plus I don't know how this happens but Bill is reaching his G limit the capsule is heating up but not catastrophically so we're slowing down very very fast the G's are coming down we're at 11 G's now coming on 10 but then Bill eats it he dies of excessive G force damage he did survive a stint at 15 plus but right about the 10G mark he did finally die. Now we are in a horrible position. Of course we lost Bill, one of our well, flagship astronauts. But probably even worse, our capsule loaded with science is now plummeting towards the Earth uncontrolled and unsalvageable. The parachutes in the capsule are perfectly fine. But they do need a sentient being at the helm to pull the lever to deploy the parachute. And that my dear friends, is not going to happen. So, instead of some glorious science, we get this. And with that, let's go have a look at our science tree, because we did get some. Of course, the reports that were radioed back, they counted, and we have 231 points. I'm looking here at the advanced construction bit, which is useful, because when we get it, we can make small to large adapters and make our rockets stable. Of course, the solar panels also essential for functioning probes, and I'm going to get those. 
Now we have 140 points left and have a sneak peek at the next stage of development. Some really small engines for like tiny tiny probes, interesting stuff. And here we get the first glimpses of KSP Interstellar stack with radiators to bleed off excess heat, stuff that we so far have not really encountered yet, and of course more solar panels. This stuff costs 160, and I don't have it yet, but there is also other priorities. What I really want is the nuclear engine, which is at the top still grayed out. First let's have a look at this node that gives us some sensors, but not much else. This node here, the advanced construction one that I was talking about, we get that for the bigger parts and for making our way into the nuclear node. Uh, you can see it's grey, so we need a node from this side. Probably not the specialized construction one I'm looking at now, but the one right above that. Let's see if we look at that. Specialized control in and of itself doesn't have the most useful things. Larger pods, some RCS systems, um, SES modules, stuff that isn't really used in our space program as of yet, as of, although a lander can, could be useful but we are going to need that to unlock our nuclear technology which we want for more Delta V, nicer rockets and of course nuclear power, hey it's good. In order to do this we are going to repeat the mission and retrieve more science so let's pr proceed to the launch pad and do that. Well here we have Bob, I've skipped the launch uh, because if you want to see that again just rewind this episode and watch it from the beginning. We have Bob, everything looks exactly the same and he is proceeding to do his science. Let's see him do it and then see how he gets back because well there's no point really showing it again because it is exactly the same. Of course I am going to attempt a slightly different re-entry profile so that he might survive. And here we are with that re-entry profile. Well, it's a fancy word for just slamming into the atmosphere at a slightly higher altitude. We are currently at 98 kilometers, and if I recall correctly, our periapsis will be something in the range of 60, 70 kilometers. This is a few days ago, so I might be off, but no matter, here we go, and let's see if Bob incinerates or lives. What I've experienced with the previous re-entry was that the engine, the tanks, uh, those bits of the vessel that are not a heat shield, they impart on the vessel a deceleration of about a G, and then when they burn off, which with that slow deceleration and subsequent moderate heating doesn't happen until very deep in the atmosphere, then for some reason the command pod experiences a very high G load and the occupant is crushed. This doesn't strike me as realistic and it's probably an artifact of a value in a config, in a mod, somewhere. I'm not going to go out and hunt for it. I am just going to resign myself to using just pod re-entries where they do not have the whole vessel ablating burning away so that the higher drag is applied from the beginning and that might still lead to a gradual re-entry slope. So far for my thoughts, um, there might have been a bit of foreshadowing because we are experiencing a very similar thing to as what I just explained and what happened to poor dead Bill. The ship is burning up, the engine is only very slightly overheating and we are decelerating at a positively pedestrian 1G. We are here at our periapsis, 59 kilometers, and we are starting to rise again. Oh dear, look at that. The ship even turned around. That is not very good. <laughs> I forgot about that. The ship turned around because of its, I don't know, aerodynamic properties or whatnot, and even though it's not going to burn up, the parachute has burned up. <laughs> That's not very good. Um, Bob is going to escape back out into space on this pass, but he has no more fuel, no more parachute, so he is pretty much doomed. That's the third orange-suited hero that has bit the dust. Look, I'm trying to spin the capsule to turn it around, but it doesn't work. And there is the very hard cut to... Oh, look at that. I must have reloaded the game. Uh, old me is such a dick. I didn't let the capsule crash, I reloaded the game for that re-entry to make it not flip around, because I probably was fed up with it. 
And now we have here just the capsule re-entering with a parachute. So that's a definite cheat here. But, well, how can I put it? Bob Kerman did die of G-Force damage, just like his predecessor, Bill Kerman. He died of G-Force damage, but Mission Control saw this coming and radioed him to... You wait for it. Deploy the chute before he died. So the chute is deployed, and fingers crossed we are going to get our science. And indeed we do. The chute has deployed and is lofting this, well, the pod is probably gross on the inside, but this gloriously scientific pod back to the planet Earth. Or Kerbin, we don't care. We have a lot of science points here. The experiments from solar space uh, are very valued very highly by the scientists. Hey, I'm hearing some music on the background. Listen to that. That's what I was listening to when I was recording. I must have not turned off the microphone. Well, fair enough. Enjoy that music from the past. Doubly so, it's very old 60s music or 1890s music. I have no idea. And it's from the past from when I was recording. Anyway, back to the game. We have science from the experiments and of course the pod that was returned from solar space. 426 points, this is the most science we've ever, ever had. 476 even. We should invest it and get a return or spend it all at once. Here we go, we get the bigger pod which is not so interesting but it will pave the way to the nuclear reactors. And well, while you watch me do the science, you will probably have noticed that my voice has changed quite a few times over the course of this episode. I made it over two days while I was fiddling with my microphone setting, so if it's not been quite perfect, uh, my apologies for that, and I think today I've picked up a cold, which makes me sound nasally like a Frenchman or whatever. Uh, so it's still me, but horribly voiceified. Here we go, getting the control stuff. Come on, old me. I want to get that nuclear reactor because that will bring the fun missions with radiation, two-headed kerbals, fish, and glow. The reactor, it has the, the Nerva engine from the stock game, but also a lot of nuclear reactors from the KSP Interstellar mod pack, and they allow, they are very modular. They make you get a reactor, attach a rocket or a generator or something else, and then you have power and awesomeness. So I have no idea as of yet how this will exactly work out, but we have a lot more parts to play with, and that should bode well for future episodes. Well, I said we have a lot more parts to play with. Uh, old me has not pushed the button yet, but who are we getting? He is definitely going to push the nuclear button. Push that button, go nuclear. So that's probably going to be the title of the next episode. For now, thanks for watching. I'm Lorenzo. If you liked it, Press like, subscribe if you didn't yet, and I'll see you tomorrow with the next episode. Goodbye, thanks for watching.